recently, the entire new category of cloud-based tools for collaboration has emerged. This category is ultimately the productivity app that supports teamwork and it's especially useful in the remote work environment. In this video, we will look at the free cloud-based collaboration apps that support shared team space and especially useful for small projects. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. In this video, we will look at the multiple tools that support shared space, free storage in the cloud, integration with desktop and mobile devices, allows you to work on the files together and allows you to manage security and permissions to define who has access to which area of the workspace. In this video, we will look at the benefits, features and capabilities of multiple cloud-based apps and I will show you how to use them to take full advantage of their features and capabilities as collaboration tools. Let's start by looking at Dropbox Paper, which is one of the best collaboration technologies today. Dropbox Paper is an excellent collaboration tool. It allows you to easily collaborate with others, write, edit, and brainstorm ideas, review designs, manage tasks, run meetings, and do a lot of other things. I put a special shortcut for you to easily get started, how to analyze data.net slash paper. To start with Dropbox paper, you just click create paper doc. You basically created a space where you can collaborate with other people on your ideas or business goals. Let's give this space a name. I'm going to change this title and I'm going to call it marketing collaboration team space and I'm going to fix the spelling. Now let's create a first message to share it with everybody else. This is the goal. Let's create YouTube marketing video for our flagman product. Now I can invite other people into this space. I just need to click the share button, type their email, and then define the permissions that I would like to give them. Permissions here are really simple. You can either give editing permissions or you can just give view permissions. You add a note to your message and then you click share. Dropbox paper solves a lot of challenging facing teams in today's remote environment. It is very useful when you need to bring multiple docs into a single workspace. It is useful for joint projects and presentations, for managing team projects, for working remote with groups of people, tracking action items, managing collaboration space, and it is accessible on the web, phone, or tablet. To start collaboration, all you need to do is select the documents in your file explorer in Windows, or on Mac, or on any other platform, and just drag and drop them into the workspace. An alternative way to add documents might be to click on Add Images button in Dropbox Paper navigation menu and then select the documents you're trying to bring into the workspace. I want to share an important security notice with you. Data in Dropbox Paper is shared based on the paper URL. Whoever you share collaboration space URL with will have access to the space. And this particular setting might be changed. To change this setting, you navigate to Collaboration Space Share Settings, click on the Settings button, and click on the links for editing. Here you will have a choice of how to manage your file and link permissions. Once you have files in your space, you can add a comment to share your ideas with others. To do that, just click on the plus button, type a comment, and click Post. You can also add some emojis into your comments to add some emotions into your messages. In addition to sharing images, you can also share media, you can share Dropbox files, add tables, you can also create timeline, you can create to-do lists, and add some formatting to your messages. So what are the cool features and capabilities why you might consider using Dropbox Paper? The main reason is that the free basic version is packed with features. It uses dark mode by default, which reduces strain on your eyes and allows you to be more productive for longer. In addition to being able to collaborate on files and ideas, you can also share images, videos, docs, and links, and a lot of other types of documents with other people. 
and you can do it in a single workspace. You can also post specific comments and tag people in your comments. Dropbox Paper provides phenomenal formatting capabilities, which includes rich text format as well as tables. And on top of that, you can manage to-do lists and do simple scheduling with very simple user interface. For example, to create marketing video, you might consider seven simple tasks. To record them, you just click on the to-do and then you capture the tasks. The first task might be record screencast video. The next task might be record presenter's video. And you can consider adding tasks one by one, or you can just copy and paste them from another source and then format them as a to-do list. Now, as you have a list of tasks completed, you can track the execution by setting a due date here, or you can assign people in the list to help manage the execution. You can also comment on the tasks to track its completion status. And once task is done, you can just mark it as complete. To learn more about cool features and capabilities of Dropbox Paper, consider downloading free PDF ebook at howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, tricks, and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. And now, let's look at Microsoft's OneDrive. I will show you key features and capabilities of the tool and show you how you can use it for collaboration. To access OneDrive, you navigate to OneDrive.com and either log in with your existing credentials or sign up for free to create a new account. Once you're logged in, you can see all the files available to you and as you can see, I'm using OneDrive pretty extensively. Like in many other Microsoft applications online, you have access to the menu on the left and you can navigate through the menu to see what's available to you. In OneDrive, you also have some navigational options available to you in the upper right corner. For example, you can present documents by size, you can sort them by size, or you can rearrange them, or you can choose a different view. For example, sometimes I like the list view where you can see date, you can see the status, sharing status of the document, and you can see the size of the file. I'm going to switch back to the original tiles view to see all available documents and their preview. So what is OneDrive? OneDrive is first of all an online storage tool. You get up to five gigabytes of storage for free. It is also a document collaboration tool. You can share the document with other people and work on the same document together. It is also a backup tool. It allows you to back up your documents into the cloud so you have more than one copy available to you in case something happens to your desktop or laptop. OneDrive can also be used as free Microsoft Office tool. You can create, edit, or delete, or do anything you would like with Microsoft Office documents. You can create or edit Microsoft Office files without paying the license fee. OneDrive is also a productivity tool. It allows you to organize your files for easy access and search. And also, you're able to access the files from anywhere, including laptops, desktops, or mobile devices. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. To create new folder in OneDrive, you click on the New button and then select New Folder. Then you type in the name and click Create. And you see that the new folder shows up right here on the front page. Now, if you're not happy with the name, you can right-click on the folder and select Rename. And you see my renamed folder is right here. It is called My Student Files. If you go inside this folder, it is obviously blank and empty. There is nothing in here. But what you can do now, you have a lot of new options here. You can create new subfolder. You can upload new documents. You can share this folder, move it to copy, rename, or create album from the folder or embed it into the website. So what is the smart way to organize the data on your drive? One of the best ways, if you're a student, for example, is organized in a hierarchical structure. For example, what you see here is four tiers of the hierarchical structure, college, semester, courses, and lectures. For example, you might be taking classes at the technical college. You have two semesters, fall of 2020 and then spring of 2020. And then you have two courses in the fall of 2020, Introduction to Computing and Windows 10. And then for Introduction to Computing, you will have two lectures, one on September 2nd, 
and another lecture is on September 9th. In the spring of 2021, you only have one class, which is called Soft Skills, and you didn't have any lectures for this class yet, but you can already pre-build the structure for this class. How would you organize this data in OneDrive? First step is to create a tab folder, which we will call Technical College. Now let me build the rest of the hierarchy and you can see me doing it or skip to the next part. Because names of the lectures are very similar, I can just copy the name of the lecture when I click Create, and when I create a new folder, I can just paste it and change only the lecture ID. So this would be Lecture 2. As you can see, when I'm building my structure, it is represented here as a hierarchy. It starts with My Files, then goes to Technical College, then goes to Fall 2020, and I'm currently in Introduction to Computing section, where I have two lectures. To navigate within this hierarchy, we just need to click on the particular folder, and it takes us back. To go inside the hierarchy, we just click on the folder itself, and it takes us inside. Now I build the structure. Let's see how we can use it to take advantage of all the features of OneDrive. Once you have the structure in place, you can navigate to the lecture for September 2nd and create a new file here. We will create a new Word document here and take notes from the lecture. To do that, you just click on the New and Word document. Once you click on the Word document, it takes you to the Word Online and starts a brand new Word document. As you can see, we can also create Excel, PowerPoint, OneNotes, Form Survey, or just a plain text document. And the coolest part of it is that it's all going to be created right in the cloud, which means that it will be accessible from any one of your devices. Now, let's say you didn't have internet connection in your classroom, so you took notes during the lecture in the offline mode and saved the file right on your desktop. What you can do now, you can click Upload button, you will find that file that you created, and you will upload it into OneDrive. The coolest part of this is that you can upload not just single files, but also the entire folder. So you will be able to bring in and replicate the structure right from your desktop. So what are the cool features of OneDrive you might benefit from? The biggest one, I think, is creation or editing of Microsoft Office documents for free. You don't need any additional license to start working on Microsoft Office documents in OneDrive. Another big one, is accessing files on mobile devices. You don't just access files on your desktop, Mac or Windows. You can also download apps on your iPhone or Android device and access your files there. You also get free storage up to five gigabytes. And when you think about this, this is a lot of space. You can put a lot of Word documents, a lot of pictures into that free space. So you are ready to start using it for free at no additional cost to you. Because you can work on the Microsoft Office documents, you can also share and collaborate Microsoft Office files with others. If you're working on a student project with a group of people, you can create a document on OneDrive, share the link with people, and work together on the project. Let's look at how you can share the document and work together on the same document in OneDrive. To do that, let's click on the New button and create New Word document. So I created a new file and I picked the topic for my project, How to Protect Animals on the Planet. Now I just need to give this document a name. And as a next step, I can just click Share and send this document via email to another person. You get a confirmation that your email was sent and you can now work together on the same document. One of the coolest features of working together on OneDrive document is that you can see changes made by another person real time. For example, let's assume that I type my first paragraph on my paper, but now another person will be making the changes as well. So you see the changes that they've made and you can see that who made the changes. The changes made are almost instantaneous. In this way, you don't even need sophisticated technology to work together. For example, you can talk on the phone and make changes to the document at the same time, and you will see changes real time. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked how to analyze data.net because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. 
And now let's look at the Google Drive and its collaboration features and capabilities. Google Drive is the cloud-based storage system, which provides a lot of enhanced capabilities as well. If you have Gmail account, you already have access to Google Drive and you already have 15 gigabytes of free storage. To navigate to Google Drive, you type drive.google.com and you have access to Google Drive. So what is Google Drive? Google Drive is first of all, an online file storage. It allows you to store up to 15 gigabytes of files for free and there are additional plans that you can purchase if you need more space. Secondly, it's a collaboration tool. It allows you to collaborate and work on the same file with other people. It is also a backup tool. You can push your files from your desktop, from your phone into the cloud and store them over there with ability to access them from any computer. It is also a productivity tool because it allows you to share files and access the same file from multiple machines. It also provides native support for Google Office Docs, for example, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. And it also supports Microsoft Office files for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint. To start working with Google Drive, you just click the New button. And here you can create new folder, you can do new file upload, new folder upload, or you can create new Google Docs, new Google Sheets, or new Google Slides. You also have some additional options where you can create new Google Forms, Google Drawings, Google My Maps, Google Sites, Google App Scripts, and Google Jamboards. Let's go ahead and create a folder on Google Drive. To do that, we just need to click New button and select Folder and type the folder name. So I'm creating a folder called Milwaukee College. Once I click the Create button, the folder shows up here. As we're starting to create folders, this is an opportunity for us to think what's the best way to organize the information. And typically the best way is the way that works for you to find what you're looking for quickly. Google Drive supports hierarchical folder structure. For example, you might be studying at the college and it might be a technical college, so that might be your root folder. You might have multiple semesters there and your first semester would be fall 2020, your next semester would be spring 2021. In the fall 2020, you'll be taking two classes, Introduction to Computing and Windows 10. And in Introduction to Computing, you will have multiple lectures. You can replicate the structure right on Google Drive by clicking on the folder and creating subfolders inside the folder. Or as an alternative, you might already have the structure on your computer. And if you have this structure, you can just copy it from your computer onto Google Drive. To do that, you navigate to the root folder of the structure and just drag it and drop it right into Google Drive. Once upload is complete, you can navigate through the structure. And the cool part about this, that Google Drive doesn't just recreate the folder structure, but it also brings in all the files that you have in those folders. Now let's look at sharing and collaboration features Google Drive provides. For example, you can share a document with another person, work on a document together. You will be able to see all the changes real time and you will be able to just stay on the phone, talk on the phone, see the changes from another person and complete the projects faster. So let's suppose that as part of lecture two and week two of my class, I need to do a team project. What can I do now? I can create a new Google Docs document. I can give it a name here. I can decide on the topic and I can start typing the document. Now let's say that I need inputs from my team members or classmates. To get the input, I'll share the document with another person. To do that, all I need to do is click the share button and type the name and email of the person if I have them in my contacts right here in this dialog box. Once they receive the document and open it, we see this marks, we can work on the document together and you see changes by another person highlighted in a different color. As another person makes the changes, you see changes coming in your version of the document real time. You can also navigate to file, version history and see version history to see all the changes made by different people. Google Drive provides you advanced capabilities working with images. For example, let's assume that I keep all of my YouTube thumbnails on my hard drive on my PC. And now I would like to bring them onto my Google Drive. To do that, I would need to create a new folder here and I can do it by clicking new folder, type in a new folder name, I'll call it YouTube thumbnails and clicking create button. Once new folder is created, I can put two windows side by side in Windows 10 by using snapping feature of Windows. And uh, to remind you, this feature is uh, Windows left arrow 
and Windows right arrow shortcut keys on your keyboard. Then I will select all the images in my PC by holding Shift button and selecting the first and the last file in the series, and then I can drag and drop them right into this folder. You will see the files are uploading, and this is an uploading Windows with the status. Once all files have uploaded, you see preview of all thumbnails right here in Google Drive. If you would like to see additional, more detailed information on the images, you can just switch between the views. In this view, you see all the details. You have owner, you have last modified date, and you have file size. Or if you would like to have a preview of the images, you can toggle between those two views. You can access Google Drive folder features right here in the navigation menu. When you click on the folder, you see additional functions that's available for every folder. For example, you can open it with, you can add a new folder, you can share, get shareable link, add shortcut to drive, move somewhere else, add to start, rename, change color, search on YouTube thumbnails, download or remove. Same way as accessing folder features, you can access file features and properties right when you do right mouse click in Google Drive. For example, for the images, you can do preview, open with, share, get shareable link, add shortcut to drive, move to, add to start, rename, view details, manage versions, make a copy, and do other things as needed. Let's look at the reasons why you might consider using Google Drive based on its cool features and capabilities. You get 15 gigabytes of free storage. You get native support for Google Office documents. You can create natively Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. You have limited support for Microsoft Office documents. And I say limited because you can upload documents and they will be converted, but you will not have access to some of the advanced features that Office provides. You can access files on the mobile device. There is Google Drive app on the Android and iOS platforms. And you can download the app. You can log in and access the same files as you would do through browser-based interface on your desktop. Google Drive is also a share and collaboration platform. You can select a file, share it with other people, and work on the file together to get results faster. Let me share with you some advanced Google Drive features and capabilities you might benefit from in your day-to-day -day work. For example, if you look here on the screen, I see thumbnails, but some of the parts of the thumbnails are cut off short and do not show up as part of the thumbnail. I would like to see the full thumbnail. To do that, I can just right click and click preview and I can navigate through thumbnails right here on Google Drive to see full version. Another cool feature, let's say I need to download the thumbnails back onto my desktop. To do that, you can just right click on the file and click download. File will show up right here in the Chrome download folder. But let's assume that I have hundreds of those thumbnails and I need to download all of them and I need to do it fast. What Google Drive provides, it allows you to zip the entire folder and download it right onto your desktop. To do that, you can click on the folder and select download and Google will zip the file and you will download everything as just one file. The zip file will show up right here in the Chrome downloads folder. I can also manage my folders by differentiating them by color. For example, let's say I would like to give this folder a different color. To do that, I do right mouse click on the folder, select change color, and then I pick different color for this folder. I can do the same thing for all other folders. If you have a lot of folders, this helps you differentiate between different folders. You can also assign a category. Maybe green would be for the college. And if you have other projects and other folders related to other theme, you can assign them a different color. Obviously, you can share the files or the entire folder with other people. To do that, you right click on the folder and select share. You can assign different sharing restrictions here. For example, you can restrict the folder only to people that you send it to, or you can send it to anyone that has link. Once you're done sharing, you can copy the link and allow for sharing. One thing to keep in mind, if you share the entire folder, the person you shared it with will have access to all the files and all subfolders inside that folder. Another cool feature that I like is ability to track everything that happened to your Google Drive account. For example, I would like to know what happened to my YouTube thumbnails folder. To do that, I can right mouse click on the folder and see view details. And right here in the activity tab, I can see who I shared it with and all the other activities that happened to that folder. If you need to reorganize your folder structure and let's say move Milwaukee College inside of the technical college, multiple ways you can do it. You can just drag and drop it and this will move it. 
Or I will show you another way to do it. You just do a right mouse click, say move to, and then you see the entire hierarchy and you can pick technical college and click move button. Now if I go to technical college, I see Milwaukee College as one of the folders in there. Another feature which I use very frequently is add shortcuts. For example, let's say that you have multiple folders, which is not the case in my particular example in this account, but let's assume that you have hundreds of folders and you have only a specific set of folders that you access on a regular basis. To make them available for the fast access, you do right mouse click and say add shortcut to drive, and then you choose where the shortcut will show up. For example, I will add shortcut into my drive, and what you will see here is now my drive will have the shortcut for the technical college, and I can quickly differentiate this folder from other folders that I'm not accessing as frequently. One thing to keep in mind is that shortcut does not create a copy of the folder, it just creates a link and reference to the existing folder. Another cool feature I use a lot is to add a star to the folder. I do it when I need to come back to a particular folder for a particular reason. For example, if I want to come back and quickly access technical college folder, what I can do, I can select add to start. And when I select it, there is an entire category of starred items. And I can click on this right here in a hierarchical menu. And I'll see my folder that I just starred to remove it from start you do a right mouse click and say remove from start. Let me give you three main reasons why I choose to use Google Drive. Number one, it's a reliability and backup. I can backup all my desktop documents onto Google Drive. Consider that there is a desktop application available that will do backup automatically. I can also share files across computers. For example, if I need to access the same file, I can do sharing of the files over the internet. All I need to do is just log in into my Google Drive account from another computer to access all of my files. I can also collaborate on the documents with other people to get results and get the work done faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.